Scholar says, you listen, you'll need your notes paper handy and also need your textbook open to page 87. We start in section 2.4 with a definition for the average rate of change of a function over an interval. So you can see here, this goes in your notes paper, the average rate of change of f of x on the interval a to b, a and b are of x values, is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And you think about it, you might start to recognize this is the slope formula. This is change in y over change in x. So there's an example here. This is page 87 in your book. If I want to find the average rate of change of the function x cubed minus x on the interval 1 to 3, I can start with my average rate of change expression, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. You can see here that in this problem, standing in for a is 1 and standing in for b is 3. So I'm going to replace all the b's in my expression with 3. I'll replace the a's with 1. So I'm going to take that 3 and plug it into the f function. I'm supposed to have f of b. So f of 3 is, here's the formula, x cubed minus x. So that'll be 3 cubed minus 3. And I'm going to subtract the result of plugging 1 into the f function. So that would be 1 cubed minus 1. I can evaluate that. I get 24 minus 0 over 2. I'd say the average rate of change of the function f of x on the interval 1 to 3 is 12. Here in your textbook on page 87, we have a description of a graph here. This is the graph of the days as they go by and the number of fruit flies in, in a laboratory experiment with fruit flies. And we've been asked to compute the average rate of change of the number of fruit flies and using the points from the graph. So P is 23 comma 150 and Q is 45 comma 340. So we're going to use that same expression we used before. Here we don't have a formula f of x, but we do have two ordered pairs. So we're going to compute change in y over change in x. So change in the number of fruit flies divided by the number of days. So same idea, 340 minus 150 is the sort of the second y minus the first y over 45 minus 23. When we compute average rate of change in the context of a problem, we want to keep the units with it whenever possible. Sometimes just getting the units right is worth a point on the AP test. So think about those y values, the fruit fly values, 340 minus 150. The units were fruit flies, number of fruit flies. So you can see I've written in, kept my, oops, kept my units up there. And in the denominator, 45 minus 23, those are both numbers of days. So my final, and well, the next step, 190 fruit flies, a change of 190 fruit flies over 22 days, which you can simplify to say 8.6 fruit, fr fruit flies per day. What does that mean? You can take a look back at that picture. Somewhere between 23 days and 45 days into the experiment, into the life of this fruit fly colony in the lab, if I asked you, hey, is the fruit fly population increasing or decreasing? How many more fruit, fruit flies are we gaining every day? You could say that an estimate between day 23 and day 45 of how many fruit flies you're gaining per day is about 8.6 fruit flies per day. And you can see, look at the beginning of that graph, about the first 10 days, if you tried to compute the rate of change, the average rate of change, you would see that it's much lower, and that shows up in there. It's a not very steep at the beginning of the graph, and the graph becomes steeper and steeper as the days go by. So hopefully that felt a little familiar. That's what we did in 2.1. We did change in distance over change in time to find average speed. And what did we do after that? We wanted to start to investigate instantaneous speed. So we're going to move on from this idea of average rate of change, how much does a quantity change over a large time interval, to instantaneous change. How fast is a quantity changing right now? So stop the video, or the video is going to end. You're going to read page 88 in your book.